Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, we are pitting Zorin OS against Linux Mint to determine once and for all which distro is the easiest to use for new users. Now, it goes without saying that Linux Mint and Zorin are both perfect for new users, but which one you will choose may depend on a few small subtleties. Let's start with installation. The Zorin OS website makes it easier to find the file to download, as you have three simple download buttons which are the pro version, the core version, and the educational version. Most people will go for the core option and it is a single click to download. Although there is a pop-up asking whether you want to subscribe and download or just skip to the install. The Linux Mint download page has options for Cinnamon, Marty, and XFCE. Most people will want to go for the Cinnamon option. When you click the download link, you will have a list of mirrors to choose from. Very subtly, I would say that is a tad more complicated than Zorin but it's hardly a deal breaker. But for now, we will call that 1-0 to Zorin. Creating a USB drive is straightforward for each distribution and you can use Etcher, Rufus, Fentoy or one of the many other tools that can be used to create bootable USB drives. When you boot the USB, Zorin does this annoying thing where it does a validity check on it. In theory, you can skip it by pressing Ctrl and C, but it doesn't really work out too well and you generally have to wait. Linux Mint doesn't do this and so we'll call that one all. The installation for Zorin and Mint is virtually identical and the process is incredibly straightforward. Linux Mint and Zorin have similar opening layouts with a menu in the bottom left, quick launch icons and a system tray in the bottom right. Setting up Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and printing is equally as straightforward either way. When it comes to customising the desktop, the Cinnamon desktop has a lot to offer and if you followed my Cinnamon customization guide then you can see you can add all sorts of bells and whistles. Zorin goes about it in a different way. You can choose from a set of predefined layouts and there are a few bells and whistles included by default. If you want to go further with Zorin, it is a bit more complicated and you can of course get extra layouts by paying for the pro version. So for simplicity of changing the layout, I will give a point to Zorin. But for in-depth customizability, I would give a point to Mint. So to all. Both distributions come with a decent set of apps installed, including a web browser, mail client, office suite, etc. And crucially, both have flatbacks enabled by default, making it easier to find and install other apps that you might need. Zorin, however, does go one step further. Not only do you get Debian and flatbacks, but you also get snap packages as well. For the new user to Linux, this means you are far more likely to find the package you require. For that reason, whether you like snaps or not, I will give Zorin an extra point. 3-2 to Zorin. By default, Linux Mint still uses X11, whereas Zorin defaults to Wayland. You can switch to X11 if you so wish, Zorin, but out of the box what this means is that some applications won't work, such as Simple Screen Recorder. More and more though, Wayland is improving, so Zorin is forward thinking in this area. I am however going to give a point to Mint, though as it is more inclusive by using X11, so 3 all. Zorin includes something called Windows App Support, which installs a tool called Bottles and the Wine Compatibility Layer. Now it isn't perfect and is something I will show you in another video, but if you have odd Windows applications you want to try, then Zorin provides possibly the best out of the box method for doing so. So for that reason, 4-3 to Zorin. For the first time, I think Zorin might actually edge this. It used to look really gimmicky with lots of silly tools and effects, but now it is crisp and clean with great theming, and the tools are actually useful, including Zorin Connect, which enables you to connect to your phone using Zorin. Hey, we all know how good Linux Mint is. It has been Mr. Consistent and will continue to be so in the future, but as of this moment, I cannot knock Zorin OS and their developers. They are doing a great job. And that is the end of the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, Leave a comment if you don't agree with something I've said. And if you want to, join the Facebook group that's linked in the description. And you can discuss any of the videos or talk about anything to do with Linux in that channel. But for now, that is the end of the video. Thank you for watching.